What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video here on Pig City Hockey. Recap reactions, game 10 out of 82 for the 2023-2024 season for your Winnipeg Jets, and we lose again to the Vegas Golden Knights. And I'm getting real tired of having to defend this team, and I know I don't have to defend this team, but I feel like I kind of have been with the last couple losses, I'm not going to lie, because I've liked the game you know, as a whole. I thought it, it's been good hockey matches that just haven't went the Jets way. They've been getting points in overtime losses and shootout losses, so hey, what's the heck? what's the big deal, you know? But this game was going to be a big test. The first game matchup that the Jets had against Vegas in the early parts of this year, it was a good game. It was a big game for them. And I knew going into this one, this was going to be a game that Vegas always is going to find ways to win. They're going to find ways to score. They're going to find ways to beat you. That's just what Vegas does. That's their MO. The Jets need to find a way to combat that, and that's been their biggest challenge so far this season, is that when they get some adversity, it feels like, you know, the offense, you know, gets something going, but the defense fails, or the, the offense doesn't get anything going, and the defense really steps up and plays well and, you know, tries to provide some offensive opportunity. But in this game, it just kind of felt like the Jets had been in Vegas and the team had to be, the team, they were pried away from Vegas, the, pried away from the Vegas experience is what I'm trying to say, from the blackjack tables, from the casino, it just felt like a tired team out there that knew what their game plan was, but just poorly, poorly executed it, you know, this is a team that was 5-2 to two tonight, uh, I know one of those goals was an empty netter, I'm pretty sure, um, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the March so goal was an empty netter, but I can't really remember, but I'm gonna, rem I'm going with it as an empty netter, but this whole game, it just, it just felt like the Jets just didn't have enough, and you know, even though there were good moments, the forward core looks good. At the end of the day, this is a th this this is look. We've seen this time and time again, and I'm trying not to get heated to talk about it because I really did have some optimism going into the season based on what we saw from the forward core in preseason and the early part so far. But we here we are, the 10 game mark. I said by the 10 game mark, you know, I'd have an idea of how things were going to play out. And this year, it looks like it's going to be the exact same thing we've seen time and time again. An area of the Jets is going to be pretty good. Their offense this year looks pretty deep. I think the offense this year is going to be pretty good and pretty consistent throughout the full 82 games this year. You know, knock on wood, but that's that's my hope so far. But everything else about this team just screams inconsistency. And I know Rick Bonus is gone. I know we don't have our head coach back there. I know that there's lots going on with that distraction. But at the end of the day, Scott Arneal just doesn't have any real control over this team as a complete team. The forward core goes out there with themselves on 5-on-5, five five and they look okay, you know? They, they they don't play the worst. 5-on-5, five five, the Jets are actually a pretty damn good team. The special pe teams, though, the penalty kill, the power play, it is abysmal. It is The power play has been abysmal for so long now. Like, one for five tonight, I know that's great, but every game, the Jets are getting so many power play opportunities, and they're putting up, like, three shots the entire game on power play. It's pathetic. And something needs to change. And again, we've seen this time and time again. I just feel like I'm insane right now because y'all know the definition of insanity. It's an overarching theme with this team. It's repetition, 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 expecting it to ch work and change. But at the end of the day, I just don't know if it's going to work. I... I I don't know, this team just frustrates me because I like the off offense, you know, I look around, I see Kyle Connor playing great, six goals already, like, there are a lot of good moments, like, there are a lot of good things with this team, a lot of good things with this team right now, but at the end of the day, it's an incomplete team, and that's exactly how it's going to stay probably for the remainder of this year because that's just what Jets management does. Jets management adds one trade in, you know, the Dubois swap, bringing in three great offensive uh, forward options, the offense looks good, it looks, you know, revitalized. But then at the same time, the defense is just so fucking lackluster. I know Billy Hinola's hurt, so, we, you know, that could have been a big thing. But it just everything about the defense is so lackluster. You got Josh Morrissey out there with Dylan DeMello. And outside of that, even though Josh Morrissey has been rusty at times defensively to start this year, outside of that, the inconsistency is just is everywhere. Dylan Sandberg, you know, a good player that just has problems right now because look at his line mates. Everything with this team is just inconsistency, lackluster. It's just one area is great. The other areas are so mediocre that they just they kill you and then they'll down the long stretch. They in a 60 minute hockey and you can't have, you know, great forwards for 60 minutes, then just be completely inconsistent fucking everywhere outside of five on five. You're just not gonna win hockey games against Stanley Cup pedigree teams. The Jets just will not elevate themselves to a Stanley Cup pedigree team unless management finally fucking wakes up and changes some things about this. Because this is a good fucking team. It is. And that's why I'm kind of frustrated is because all you have to do to fix this and make them better is just admit your mistakes. Move the fuck on from Nate Schmidt. Maybe move away from Brendan Dillon. You know, 
balance some things out with the power play, shift them things around. They've got, they've got so many fucking dynamic options in the forward core. Are you really going to tell me you got to throw out the exact same fucking power play every time when you're struggling? It's insane to me that um, that, that these are multi-million dollar coaches out there. And I know Rick Bonus isn't there, but Scott O'Neill has been around for a while. And you're telling me that that's the best you can fucking come up with as a professional coach? I just don't understand the asinine behavior that the Jets have behind their bench. And I'm not ripping them apart. This isn't Paul Maurice type stuff. It's just... It's just frustrating because you look at a game like this and everything's failing on the penalty kill. The power play is weak. So what do you do? You keep it the exact same and expect something to change. It's, we've seen this before and this game was frustrating because the Jets had moments where they were in this game, where they were outplaying Vegas. They outshot Vegas. They had a good game. But at the end of the day, the Vegas Golden Knights are so much of a better complete team that know how to correct themselves, know how to, I can rely on anybody from, you know, depth scoring and that, you know, that energy to give you some life. The Jets just didn't have that. Outside of the forward core playing good 5 on 5, I just didn't like this game. I was angry at this game. And even then, the 5 on 5 play, you know, like, I still scored five fucking goals, four goals, you know, like, so whatever. Two of them power play, but still. At the end of the day, this game just frustrates me, so I'm gonna keep it nice and short. Jets lose, Arizona tomorrow, they better fucking win that game because they need to get some damn points under their belt. Like, I know those two, you get two points in back-to-back -back overtime and a shootout loss. So yeah, that's great, but at the same time, you gotta get going. It's the 10 game mark, you know? Arizona's ahead of the Jets in the central standings right now. Like, the Jets are mediocre so far to start this, and that's exactly kind of where we thought they would be, but they're incomplete, and that's exactly how I felt about this team going into the season. It doesn't matter how you feel about the Shifley contract or the Hellebuck extensions, because they're good players. I'm not talking about the money. This team is incomplete. They're not going to be successful in the long run unless something happens, you know, with the addition of Vili Hinola coming back from injury, maybe that could be some lifeline coming into the defense, but until something really happens with this team, I don't have much faith in it. You've got Declan fucking Chisholm rotting on the bench, hasn't played once, and the defense is so mediocre that I don't understand how you justify putting in Logan Stanley before him, because you know exactly what Logan Stanley brings, and even then, I would still rather see Logan Stanley being brought into a game, because at least maybe he'll be able to fucking play and fight for something because he's got something to prove. Out here, when you're just icing these $5 million guys that are 30 years old that don't give a fuck, that know they're going to play because they're consistent NHLers and blah, 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 blah. Just, look, I'm just done talking about this. This game frustrated me. This team is really starting to get on my nerves a little bit because, again, time and time again, management tries to sell us on the fact that this is a competitive team that's just full of holes and weaknesses that they're never going to really ad ad address and just hope with a fingers crossed and a prayer that they make it to a wild card spot for four playoff games just two for being at home because you know we're not going to win any other more than that. I'm done talking about this. Fuck this game. Some, Please someone wake up from the Jets. It'll all be over.